Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Are you tired of feeling overwhelmed by life's daily challenges? Do you want to develop a daily routine that allows you to see obstacles differently and tackle them with greater energy? What about learning how to be more present and live more authentically? In this summary, we'll explore the many ways you can live a more purposeful and fulfilling life, one step at a time. From the healing power of loving kindness to the transformative energy of relatedness, you'll learn how to grow as a human being, tackle obstacles with compassion, and be a positive influence on the world and the people around you. Want to know more? How could you not? Let's dive in. Chapter 1, Handling Hope and Change with Wisdom and Balance Starting a new day can be invigorating. Like when your favorite song pops up on the radio. It can fill your day with hope. But what about a sudden downpour? Not so good. You see, hope is a double-edged sword. It's easy to get stuck on specific outcomes. That's when things get tricky. Are you tying your happiness to a fleeting moment? It feels limiting, right? Now, you might ask, why bother with hope if it's so fickle? It's because a life without hope feels solemn. No, we're not giving up hope entirely, instead, we're trying to learn more about it. For this, we can borrow from the Buddhist tradition. Buddhism says to approach hope with caution, not in the distant sense, but in a way that keeps us grounded in the present. Think of a time when you felt utterly disappointed. Maybe your favorite team lost, or you didn't get that promotion. It felt like the world was crumbling, right? But it wasn't. That's the main concept here. Our goal, then, is to reach a perfect level of balance which you can call equanimity if you want to impress your friends. Equanimity is a healthy perspective where you know that each moment, no matter how hard, doesn't determine what comes next. So, how do you relight that candle of hope, especially after it's been blown out? Remembering prior struggles is a good place to start. Have you faced problems in the past and come out stronger? If so, that's cause for hope. Here's another gem, lean on your community. There is something about sharing challenges that makes them seem more manageable. Here's the point, when you're mindful, hope thrives. To avoid disappointment, hold hope lightly and recognize your role in the big picture. Chapter 2, Avoid Overwhelm by Having Compassion and a Plan This might happen to you often, you're juggling a million tasks and responsibilities every day, and that monkey won't get off your back. There's a name for this, being overwhelmed. It goes without saying that having a way to deal with these emotions is useful. Try the following ritual. Before the mayhem begins, set an intention each morning, something like, Today, I want to treat everyone with respect, regardless of our differences. Before you choke, realize that this isn't about agreeing or even loving everyone. It's about ending the day without regretting how you dealt with the world. Setting such a goal is like putting a target on your GPS. It helps you stay focused. If you're feeling overwhelmed in the middle of the day, find a doorway to stand in. This may sound strange, but hear it out. A doorway is perfect for focusing your attention on where you are right now. Feel your feet on the ground. Then, you can center yourself by shifting your focus between your senses, the colors surrounding you, the chirping of birds outside, and the feeling of a draft. These seemingly small deeds create pockets of peace in our full lives. But what about days when you're not only tired but drowsy? First, it's crucial to distinguish between a genuine need for rest and a great sloth impression. While the former is your body's call to take a break, the latter is more of an excessive urge to slack off. If the latter is the case, it's time to spice things up. Add some movement, engage in lively conversations, or try something new. As it happens, 
feelings of being overwhelmed aren't the real problem. It's how you respond to them that counts. Instead of cursing these feelings and making them your enemy, accept them for what they are and approach them with the equanimity we discussed earlier. What if this doesn't work? Bring on the laughs. Laughter isn't just the best medicine, it also restores energy. So be kind to yourself, especially when you're feeling irritable. After all, life will always throw tremors your way, but with these insights, you'll always find your way back to solid ground. Chapter 3. Cultivate Mindfulness, One Drop at a Time You're lying in bed, and there it is, the constant trickle of a dripping faucet. Drip, drip, drip. Isn't it annoying? But what if you took that same persistence and applied it to your inner self? Mindfulness is the practice of focusing on the present moment without judgment. It involves paying close attention to your thoughts, feelings, sensations, and surroundings while remaining open and curious. Mindfulness, like water, fills the mind one drop at a time. When you're stuck in traffic and you take a deep breath to calm down, that's a drop. The last time you chose understanding over snapping? Yep, another drop. As you practice, you might find yourself worrying that someone else's mindfulness bucket is filling up faster than yours. It's tempting to compare, but here's the thing, likening buckets undermines you and limits your potential. Each of us has our mindfulness journey with our own rhythm and receptacle. And what if you're worried about your progress slipping if you skip a meditation or have a bad day? Don't. The beauty of these buckets is that they never leak. They're always at the ready, waiting for the next drop of compassion. Remember, the aim isn't to fill the bucket as quickly as possible. It's about adding to it on a regular basis, every pause, reflection, and moment of understanding counts. The bucket slowly fills, and each drop brings you closer to being a more thoughtful and caring version of yourself. Chapter 4. Practice Loving Kindness Toward Yourself and Others It's time to bask in the light of loving kindness, a potent remedy for lowering stress, increasing joy, and connecting with an inner peace. The frosting on the cake? It sends beautiful sparks of positivity into the world. But first, what exactly is loving kindness? Well, it's similar to being hugged by your favorite people. Imagine a scene where tenderness and loving energy are wrapping around you. As you enjoy this sensation, you gently tell yourself, may I be safe, happy, healthy, and live in peace. Loving kindness can energize your spirit. And you train for it simply by being the wonderful person that you are. Picture yourself at the center of a colorful circle of affection with those closest to you, showering you with love. Seize this love, shape it into a dazzling sphere, and release it outward. Experience the fascinating loop of love in which you play both the benefactor and the recipient. Now, let's broaden the circle. Recall someone who has been there for you through thick and thin. Silently send them your heartfelt wishes, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you live in peace. It's like wrapping an angelic arm around them. You can also extend loving kindness to casual acquaintances. Close your eyes once more and look for a familiar face, perhaps someone with whom you occasionally cross paths. Offer them a silent blessing. Consider it a covert act of kindness that will brighten both of your hearts. Really, we can show loving kindness to all beings, without prejudice, exception, or separation, expressing our ability to care for all. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live in peace. This blessing is for everyone, whether they are people, birds in the sky, or fish in the sea, to feel safe and cherished. Keep in mind that you don't need an excuse to love yourself and others. It's simple, but it has far-reaching benefits. So go ahead, spread some compassion around and see what happens. Chapter 5. The Importance of Receiving Generosity 
When someone is generous, our minds flip through a Rolodex of doubts and questions. Can I return the favor? Will they hold it over me? Let's face it, when someone offers us a helping hand, our first instinct is to decline or downplay the gesture. Why is that? Well, in a world that often celebrates independence, we're conditioned to value self-sufficiency. But here's a truth bomb, receiving generosity isn't a sign of weakness. It's actually a testament to the connectedness of human beings. The act of giving is a beautiful thing, but there's something equally profound about receiving with grace. It might be that, when someone extends a helping hand, you feel reluctant to accept it, as if the person would expect something in return. But genuine compassion does exist. And in this case, the most effective response is to let appreciation fill your heart. True generosity knows no bounds. It makes no distinction between sender and receiver, and it goes beyond the fear of being exposed. We're all vulnerable in different ways, and it's okay to lean on one another from time to time. You, like everyone else, deserve to be loved and cared for. When you're in need, let compassion flow freely and receive help with joy. Doing so not only honors yourself but also the giver's humanity and kindness. The important thing to remember is that we all share our time, resources, and love in making the world a better place. Receiving generosity reminds us that we are all one, and by embracing the circle of giving and receiving, goodness flows freely in both directions. We all have moments of vulnerability, and it's okay to seek and accept help. So, don't hesitate to receive with an open heart and a grateful spirit. Chapter 6 The Power of Gratitude Have you ever felt the subtle thrill that comes with opening a new book? Or gotten lost in the humdrum of the city outside your window? That's gratitude. No, we're not talking about flaunting your latest win with the hashtag blessed. It's more like this, when life hands you lemons, instead of whipping up lemonade, you marvel at the bright yellow hue and relish the zesty scent. You see, gratitude isn't just a mood booster, it's an elixir. It's like sipping on a cup of happiness every day. It calms your fears and grounds you in goodness. So, pay exquisite attention to the ordinary. It's in those everyday moments that gratitude truly flourishes. Use all your senses to soak in the present deeply. Smell the freshly brewed coffee, savor the taste of your favorite meal, feel the warmth of a hug from a loved one, these are your pockets of joy. Why does this matter, you ask? Well, zooming in on love and beauty strengthens resistance to negative thoughts and transforms even the simplest moments into ones filled with love. Now, a little exercise for you, pause. Breathe. Think of one thing you're very grateful for. Did you feel that warmth? That's the magic of gratitude. When you're facing tough times, make a conscious effort to cultivate it. Reflect on the ones you hold dear, and truly savor those ordinary moments with extraordinary sensory attention. It's a surefire way to bring yourself back to a world brimming with goodness and love. Chapter 7 Make Compassion Real Through Relatedness Here's a fun challenge, how many smiles can you catch in a day? Not the ones on screens, but genuine, face-wrinkling smiles. In an age where we're often more connected to our devices than to one another, it's crucial to discuss relatedness. But exactly what is it? Remember the feeling of gratitude that comes from memories of loved ones? That's relatedness at its finest. Now what might happen if you sprinkled more of that magic into everyday life? There's only one way to find out. Every smile and polite excuse me has the potential to spark a connection. People in the digital age have forgotten the value of emotional contact. So, how about reviving it? Paying attention to someone is one of the most powerful ways to connect. This is where active listening comes in. To employ this, stay curious and ask follow-up questions while chatting. 
This shows your interest in what a person is saying as well as your respect for their opinions. Most talks should go beyond a nod and a grin. When we truly listen, we invite others to share a piece of themselves with us. When was the last time someone gave you encouragement or a shoulder to cry on? Recently? Then pass it on. Give a high five when someone shares their achievement or offers a comforting word. Everyone's life is a series of peaks and troughs, and just acknowledging them can form a bridge between two souls. Oh, and here's another thought. How about reaching out to someone you've lost touch with? Even a quick message can reignite familiarity, reminding both of you of the threads that once linked your worlds. So, as you start your day or wind down for the evening, keep these relatedness thoughts in mind. Life can seem chaotic, but each of us has the power to create pockets of belonging. Let's try to make every interaction count. Final Summary Life can be tough, but it's also full of beauty and possibility. So dare to infuse your daily routine with mindfulness and meaning. By changing your perspective, setting daily intentions, and embracing the present moment, you can find balance and joy amidst the chaos. Small steps can lead to big changes over time, so don't be afraid to start now. Embrace the methods in this summary and journey toward a life that's truly yours. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.